Hello and welcome to another French Eek's Top Tip video. I'm Craig Phillips, their brand ambassador. In this video, I'm going to show you different methods on how you can paint your room. From protecting surfaces like your floors and woodwork, preparing new plaster work ready for painting, skating boards, doors and frames, to applying your first coat of paint on bare plaster, then once it's dry, the second coat using a paintbrush, roller, and a small handheld paint sprayer. Although these are brand new plastered walls, you don't want to paint directly on top of them without a little bit of preparation. I'm using a very light sandpaper, 150 grade, and I'm just gently scoring the surface of the plaster. Because if it's been plastered by a professional, quite often it's like a smooth glass finish, and you want it to be a little bit more coarse for your wall chalk paint to bond into it. If you've got any holes in there, fill them with some filler, leave it to dry and sand them down. The corners where the walls meet, get your cork and run your gun all the way down from top to bottom. You can also do this along the edge of the skating board where it meets the plaster work. It's always wise to use a flexible paintable cork and not a silicone sealant. Once it's applied, you can smooth that off with a clean wet finger. As for the woodwork, mix up some sugar soap with warm water and give the surfaces a real good scrub down, washing off all the grime and grease. Give them a rinse, dry them off, then a gentle sanding if they've had some previous paint on before. This helps the new paint key to them. Now you can apply further paintable flexible core around the edge of the frame where that meets the plaster work. Now I've sanded the walls, I'm going to give them a light wiping down with a damp cloth to remove any dust off there. Previously painted walls may be greasy if they're in a kitchen or even grimy in a bathroom. Make sure you scrub all areas you intend to paint with French heat sugar soap. And finally, take your hoover and hoover along the top and bottom edges of your skating board right round the room and around the door frame and any ledges that may stick out proud that could gather dust on. Now the walls and woodwork are prepared and ready to start painting. I'm going to start with the walls first. And the paint I'll be using is French Cheeks Chalk Wall Paint and the colour is Sage Froth. Now I'm going to be applying it in two different manners. One is the traditional way, cutting in the corners and around the woodwork with the brush and then covering the walls with the roller. The second option is my handheld paint sprayer. There we go. Oh, look at that beautiful colour. This is one of the newest colours out of the Frenchy wall paint range. I'm going to give it a little stir up. Now with us painting directly onto bare walls, we've scored it a little bit with the light sandpaper. What I want to do is dilute the first coat down just a little bit, just 5 or 10% water. And that'll just help that first layer of paint penetrate into the plaster and grip onto it that bit better. Only has to be a small 5% of water in there. Mixed well, and this is the kind of consistency you're looking for. So I'll pour some of that into my tray. I start to roll my roller into the paint. I don't want to emerge it deep into it and let it fill up the insides of the cavity of the roller itself. I just want it on the edges. So once it's on the edges there, I rub it in and get plenty on there. So that's ready to start painting. Now, what I am going to do is take my brush and start to cut in right round the edges and along the skating board and around the frame on this one wall. Now at this point, you don't have to worry about cutting the paintwork in on the plaster that neat up to the frame itself. I want to cover the plaster of course and then go over onto the frame so I make sure that I cover all of my filler. I'll do this a couple of coats and once it's dry, then I can cut in my frame, potentially with a different colour. Of course, if you're not painting your frames or skating boards, then you would have to mask along the edge and cut it in neatly. 
If you're worrying what this gap is, don't worry, our walls are hinged because they fold together in our studio. So now the cutting in is complete. I'm gonna start with the roller. And what I don't want you to do is get a load of paint on your roller, start here in the corner, go up and down, up and down of this and start to move yourself across. Because what will happen is you'll have a lot of paint on here and only a small amount of paint there. So I've got my roller loaded up. This is what I want you to do with it. One can go up, then across to here. And as you're putting that pressure, you're spreading that paint a little bit more equally. Okay, so it's nice and thick there. It's getting thinner as we go across. When it gets to that point, then you can start to cover that area in. You're putting a fair bit of pressure on there, not too hard so the paint starts to splatter back. But what we've done now is we've spread that paint a little bit more even than we would have done if we'd have just started on one side and went across there. There wasn't that much paint on there because that was the first roll, so I'll add a little bit more in. And do the same again, just a little bit lower down here. And that way I'm spreading that paint around. Every time I use French sheet paint, it never ceases to amaze me. Even after just one single coat on brand new plastic, it looks like it's almost complete. Now I'm going to spray paint the walls. I did dilute my paint by 5% when using the roller on the bare plastic. However, I need it to be a little bit thinner, so I'm going to put another 5% in there to use it through the paint spray. Perfect, that's the consistency you want. And now I'm ready to spray paint the wall. Always test your mixed paint on a piece of cardboard when using a paint sprayer. You could adjust the nozzle for a narrow passover or a wide passover. You can also go up and down or left to right. Once you're happy with the finish, you're ready to start spraying your walls. If you are paint spraying, it's always wide to wear PPE. I'm using a dust mask and safety specs. Just hold the nozzle about four to six inches away from the surface, and I'm spraying from top to bottom for my first layer. Once I've done this, turn the nozzle, and then you can apply another layer going from left to right to make sure you've got a good solid finish for your first coat. And then of course, you'd leave this to dry for two hours before applying your second. Whatever choice of application you choose to apply your paint, you know you're going to get a quality result when you're using French Eats chalk wall paint. For your second coat, no dilution is required straight out of the can. Give it a good stir up because as you know, it's lovely, thick, creamy paint. Straight into the tray, then using your brush, cutting around the edges. Using my brush, I'm going to cut in around the edges of the plaster work, where it meets the skating board and the door frames. I don't have to be too neat at this point, because French Eats Chalk Wall Paint is also great for painting your woodwork. Now my walls are completely dry, I'm going to turn my attention to the woodwork. Now in this room, all we have is our skating boards, door and frame. You at home may of course have windows as well. I would always recommend starting with the high points before you work your way down to the skating boards. I prefer the doors and the frame because you can get a lot of traffic coming in and out, so you want these to be dry as quick as possible. So I've took my dust sheets up, I've given it a little hoover down, just to prepare the areas a little bit more cleaner and make sure there is no dust in the air before I start painting. As for the choice of paint, you've got a number of options. All French Eats chalk paints, of course, adhere well to woodwork. However, some are more durable than others. A lot of people choose to use their wall colours and continue them across all of the woodwork, which looks fantastic. Or alternatively, 
you can use the alfresco paint which is suitable for indoors and outdoors and of course is very hard wearing and there is always the trim paint which is perfect for skating boards doors door frames etc and both of them don't need any finishing coat I'm going to be using the Alfresco and the colour choice is Wise Old Sage because I know it'll go great with my wall paint, which is Sage Froth. Now I tend to paint the main face of the architrave around the door frame first and then I'll come in and cut them edges up in a moment. And I go nice and tight into the actual door itself. Of course, we are going to be painting the door, but I will have to open the door and get at the inner edge of the frame. Now, if you're confident with a brush, of course, you can just cut in around your hinges. However, if you're not, do mash them up to avoid any paint going on to the metal hinge. Now, cutting in these edges where the actual frame meets the plaster work is quite tricky, so get a fair bit of paint on there and just start to go a little bit closer as you're going down the wall. Of course, if you're not confident on cutting these in with your paintbrush, you could always mask up along the edge of the plaster work. Now, when you have cut in along that edge where it meets the plaster work, you'll find some of the paint from your brush is going back onto the front of the frame. So just feather that out because what you don't want to do is create what I call lumps and bumps on the edge of that external corner of the architrave. You just feather over that nice and lightly. You're not putting any more on, not putting any more off. You're just spreading out what is kind of gathered on there from cutting in this edge. Now in a six panel door like this, you have got quite a lot of detail quite a lot of grain also that you can see in the door and these kind of countersunk mitered edges on here. So these are quite bad drip hazards really. If you run your brush up here and catch it, you're gonna get a drip coming down there. So once you apply the paint on, covering up the area, then you kind of press the brush in quite tightly and you start to feather it away from them corners all the time. That tight into that corner and then up tight into that corner and a crush. So I'm not brushing my brush this way and catching this lip, where of course it's gonna pull any excessive paint off the edge of your brush. It's just about feathering it out. And always going with the grain where possible. Then you can do the same across the rest of the panels. I intend to paint all six sections before I complete the rest of the door. So now the six recessed sections of the door are all painted and cut in around the edges. The next stage I would do now is these inner bars here and these center bits here. The grain is going that way on there and the grain is going that way. So again, I'm going to apply all the paint on and then feather it into the grain past this point, which is the joining point on there. And then I'll do my long strips at the end. One important thing to remember whenever you're painting is not to try and drag the paint out as far as you can and get it as thin as possible, you know. It's just about applying the right amount on to just cover that surface well. Of course, you don't want to apply it too thick as the paint will run before it dries. And then when that strut across there, I cross it, I then feather it across that way. And you're just going to get the perfect finish then, where the two bits of wood actually meet on there, or grain. So again, where I'm crossing the grain there, I went up that way onto this bar, and now I'm going to cross it there, where that grain runs, and then I'll 
these two side sections come all the way down there full length. If it was a solid wood door, not even a hard, soft wood door. Uh, this particular door is only a lightweight one, but the surface of it is compressed to give that wood effect. So when you paint the door, you still want to be able to see that grain in between there and certainly not brush marks. It will dry flat, the Alfresco range. So it's certainly great for beginners who haven't got a massive amount of experience painting. It just allows you to get a fantastic result when you're not a professional. When you're using it, you can see why millions of Frenchy customers say it's easy for beginners and it's the choice for professionals. So that is one coat now complete on one side of the door and the architrave going around the door. The next stage I'm gonna do, whilst it's still wet, is open this door, paint the opening edge of the door, just the one opening edge of the door that's visible, and then the inner opening edge of the actual door frame itself, which of course goes right the way around. I'll do the two sides and the top head. Whilst the first coat of paint is drying on my door and frame, I'm going to apply the first coat to the skirting boards. Now, depending on how good you are with your paintbrush, you can, of course, use a low tack masking tape and run a line across the top on your plaster work because that paint's dry. And also put your dust sheets back down and tape them up really tight against the bottom of the skirt itself. But of course, here in our workshop, I don't have to do that, I can go straight into painting. So I'm getting plenty of paint on my brush. I'm not gonna start cutting the edges in here, I'm just gonna get the paintbrush covered with the paint. And it doesn't matter if I touch the floor on this, I know I've hoovered up and I know I've brushed it all, so there is no dust on there to be gathered. Once you've got a bit of paint on your brushes, then you can start working your way closer to the cutting point where the edge of the woodwork meets the plaster. So again, like our frames, I'm getting plenty of paint on the end. I'm just bending it in, putting that little bit of pressure on and moving it closer and closer. Each time I strike the line in, I get that little bit closer. And I'm kind of pointing the brush quite high, or I'm holding it quite high and pointing it down towards that edge. Remember, it is only your first coat. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat. The main thing is, is to just apply the paint on as even as possible. And getting one good solid coat on. And again, once you've applied it on that top bit in your causing the strain on the brush as you're dragging it and keeping it nice and tight then as always you feather it off Tim 50 last year, the eyesight's going. It's not a bad idea to have an old paintbrush to dust the areas down before painting, as dust can build up in these areas quite quickly. So the first coat has had two hours to dry. It's certainly touch dry, and I can recoat it in normal conditions. So I'm gonna apply my second coat in the same order as I did my first one. Just like the first coat, I covered the area first with my paintbrush and then pressed it in tight into the corners and drag it across one way. Same again on the opposite side, dragging it down, making sure that I'm not catching the edge of the brush in that corner where it then could potentially drip. And as always, going with the grain where possible. A 750 millimeter tin will provide a single coat for up to 12.5 square meters. 
For a durable finish, a minimum of two coats is required. So your 750 mm tin should provide full coverage for just over six square meters on non-porous surfaces. No primer or undercoat is required. It dries flat with an almost no sheen flat finish. Now when you're ready to apply your second coat of paint on your skating boards, have a really good look at the cutting line where you've delicately cut in along the edge of the skating board to the plaster work. If it's good and you're really pleased with it, great, keep at it with free hand for your second coat. However, if it's not perfect, you haven't got a professional result, here is a little trick. Get yourself some low impact masking tape, put yourself a line all the way across the plaster work, about a millimetre above your painted line. Once that's applied on, paint over this. Don't wait for it to dry, just remove your tape almost straight away and just look how perfect you can get this line. Now both the chalk wall paint and the alfresco range that I've been using are UKCA and EN713 certified, which means they're safe to use on children's toys. French Eek's brand is all about the passion and the people. Their products are easy to use for beginners as well as the choice of professionals. So that's how you prepare and paint your walls and woodwork in a room. If you're looking for more how-to videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, French Chic TV. Or if you just want some inspiration, head over to the French Chic Fan Forum on Facebook. And of course, if you want to know more about the products, visit the website, frenchheatpaint.co.uk.